the number one health issue in Richmond wasn't cancer, wasn't obesity, it was staying alive. It was like every other week there was a murder and we were going to funerals of young people under the age of 18 or teenage girls under the age of 16, 17 were having children and there were no services at all. I was at a, a breakfast meeting that uh, Congressman George Miller was speaking at and Talia Hassan was there and she was talking about this new nonprofit that she was thinking about starting up that would help improve the quality of life in the community with some uh, challenging kids that needed some, some help and some direction. Talia was working for uh, Children's Council at that time and it was all youth serving, children servicing um, agencies. It was like a consortium. It was Chuck Stevens, Talia, and I was meeting at Children's Council. And right outside the door, it was a shooting. A man chased a woman across the street. And that was in the middle of the day. You had Parchester arguing with Crescent Park, North Richmond arguing with Southside. And a lot of these young people that were getting killed, we knew their families. They had come through Talia's program, Advocates for Youth. So the problem was, was hitting close to home. And a grant came out to deal with issues going on in Richmond. San Francisco Foundation said the number one health criteria in Richmond was a young person staying alive. Well, at the time, I uh, was sitting on the Richmond City Council and for crisis management, for intervention, for helping out families, for helping out the school district, the police department that was looking for a referral agency, there was a void that needed to be filled and it was a troublesome void, uh, problems that families could not take care of themselves and there was no place to turn to until the West County uh, Youth Service Bureau was set up. Talia was the visionary. She recognized that you had to have other service agencies to deliver that service and that's the integrated service model. We didn't call it that, we didn't use that, but that's what it was. When the initial collaboration started, the goal was to serve a previously unrepresented and unserved community. At that time, the um, administration was located in a school over on Amador, I believe it was Riverside um, Elementary School. The relationships that we formed when Youth Services Bureau started, we recognized the integration came in using every piece that that child and that family needed. And that's how the services blossomed. That's how the agency grew. And it's evolved now from just a diversion program and working with probation to a family-oriented service center. The Youth Service Bureau is not a high profile nonprofit. The programs that are offered here are specific family needed programs and it's a niche nonprofit. We get the regional center involved. That's what I told him. Okay. I said we have to get a regional center. I'm already working with him on another family, so. Wraparound Services right over is a wonderful okay. well, we'll model. It brings together multiple disciplines and wrap their arms around a family and provide support from the academics to the recreation, to the community, to mental health support therapeutic services. Everyone works as a team. I got involved in the Youth Service Bureau. I started volunteering at Building Blocks for Kids Collaborative and I became part of the Youth Service Bureau. I took 
the initiative to take out the time and get involved to know what was their services about. And I really like the wraparound service. That's where they come into your home and they do family-like counseling. They facilitate the meetings. And they, they really guided my life in a um, positive way. They helped me understand some things that I didn't, wasn't understanding about my children. So you deal with the whole, the whole person. When you look at that circle of Youth Services Bureau logo, it's really a circle of all the agencies that intertwine with each other to make the person whole. The kinship program that the Bureau supports provides a lot of care for grandmothers who are what I call reparenting. Parents have been disempowered in terms of caring for their children for a variety of reasons. It's not just drugs, it could be economics, it could be uh, lack of education and so forth. So for a lot of reasons, our African American community is decimated in a lot of ways. And so grandparents may have stepped in to fill the void. Where do we go if we only get $800 a month and we got to pay PG&E plus? We got to have gas to take the kids to school. We got to buy lunches and all this. Kinship is that buffer. It's the safety net. If it had not been for grandparents getting the support through Youth Services Bureau's kinship program, that they could not have gotten the support. So we have a program now that gives support to kinship providers because they need the same resources that anybody else needs. Many times the children have a lot of um, challenges emotionally, so they need to have access to therapy and access to educational supports and so forth. In this community, a lot of the kids that I deal with and I work with, they have a lot of anger. Imagine you going to school every day and you don't feel like you belong. You don't even have the habits to do homework and stuff because you have other stuff going on at home. You know, you even have kids dealing with being homeless or even being raped. You know, and then I'm faced with, and a lot of people here are faced with building that trust and coming in and having somebody that's coming and talking to you about something different, about doing something positive and stuff. That's hard for kids to deal with because they've never had anybody in their life talk about something positive. So that's very important. Not only do we work together in the community, but we work together in-house also to make sure that we provide the best possible services for the families that we serve. The, the staff here, I think, are extremely committed to helping the families and the children, and I think the community understands that and they feel safe. And they know that they're gonna receive services and they're not gonna be judged, and they're going to be treated with dignity and respect. He was on recess, mm -hmm. so while he was on recess, you know, I was able to calm him down a little bit, and able to see, you know, all the behaviors that he was displaying in class. Yeah, because I know from the last time, every time he see you, that helped him regroup. So I know, I know that's a good outcome from yeah. where he come from, you know, in the classroom up until right now. Yeah. Working yeah. at this agency, we're at the forefront. We in these streets really working with these families and really working with these kids who real got real issues. We're not on here just putting band-aids on families and stuff. We're really out here connecting with these families, building relationships. Even if we don't work with them even more, we're still going to run into them in the community. There's some parents who maybe, maybe didn't get it right the first time. And this might be your second chance to get it right the second time with your grandkids. Sometimes in our life we say, I wish I had said this to my daughter or said this to my son, but maybe we can say it to our grandkids. And we see young people that we thought that had been discarded by society are not contributing members to society with their own children. And that's how I quantify the success of the Bureau. If the Bureau and the idea of the Bureau and its mission statement and its ingrained philosophy could spread throughout the community, we'd be in better shape.